Ranking member, Mr. Magaziner, for five minutes questioning. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, you know, the reality is that uh, because these TCO threats emanate from outside our border, because uh, the violence, the um, uh, taking advantage of people who are fleeing poverty, fleeing uh, persecution, uh, all originates or primarily originates uh, in Central South America and beyond, uh, we need to work with our foreign partners in order to crack down on TCO violence. Uh, we have to do that. And some of those uh, countries that we must work with are more reliable partners than others. That is the case, it has always been the case. Uh, but if we are truly gonna get to the root causes of these threats, it requires uh, multilateral coordination. So on that theme, uh, Mr. Blazakis, you, you talk about building capacity in our partner countries in your written testimony. Can you uh, em expand on what the opportunities are uh, in working with uh, Mexico and our South and Central American allies uh, to crack down on, on TCO uh, activity? Uh, I would uh, highlight one specific example from my, my written testimony. Um, I highlighted the need for Mexico, for instance, to improve its Financial Action Task Force, or FATF rating, related to Recommendation 23, which focuses on designated non-financial businesses and professions, DNFPPs for short. Um, this area is especially important in Mexico and is one of many countries, really, that have struggled with trying to strengthen the designated non-financial business and professional sector. Um, and it's really important to, to build that up for a lot of reasons, um, especially in Mexico. Uh, when we're talking about DNFBPs, we're talking about lawyers, accountants, and many others um, in similar professions who are enabling transactions. Uh, the drug cartels can't wash their money in the way that Mr. Urban discussed really eloquently um, without having some kind of legitimate business or invest in real estate without having an army of enablers. These enablers are areas where the US government should focus a lot of its capacity building moving forward in addition to trying to build the capacity of prosecutors, especially in the area of, of corruption. Thank you. On a related note, Mr. Farah, I was um, struck by a portion of your written testimony. Uh, you wrote, Russia and China view Latin America as a key theater of great power competition and act accordingly. The U.S. must forego complacency and seek creative new engagements with its partners. Higher quality, more comprehensive, and more sustained engagement with the right communities will go far to strengthen democracy, civil society, and regional stability. Um, can you expand on that a bit? And, and in so doing, what can we do, what can we, the United States, do to motivate uh, our foreign partners to be better partners and more effective partners in tracking down on, on TCO activity? Thank you. I think it's a challenging environment because we are now facing numerous governments that have, for example, the government of Argentina, which has declared itself as Russia's doorway to Latin America and has allowed uh, China to commit nuclear programs, deep space stations, et cetera. So I think that there is, more constrained space to operate with trusted partners. I think at the same time, the vast majority of folks in the, in the military and in the law enforcement community prefer the United States as their first partner of choice. And I think that if you look in, we mapped this out for, for Southcom and others over time, the level of high, uh, of high level visits by the Russian and Chinese is about 17 times the level of US visits to Latin America. And I think if I, what I told them at the time, if Russia can find the time in the middle of a war to send this foreign minister around, we should be able to do a little better. We have a huge disadvantage with Russia in that they have a small cadre of highly experienced uh, ambassadors that rotate around the region, speak Spanish or on Twitter all the time. We have major embassies sitting without ambassadors for, in the case of Chile, almost three years. Now we're going into Colombia, we're going into the second year. So I think that there are multiple relatively easy fixes to that engagement. And I think we also need to do a better job of helping to explain the threats to their own democracies and rule of law that the Russian and Chinese involvement bring because they're directly tied to massive corruption and massive uh, destruction of their own institutions. Thank you. And, and Mr. Blazakis, uh, one final question. You know, there's a, is a pattern that has developed at, at our hearings uh, on the border where uh, members of both parties talk about the importance of cracking down on human smuggling, cracking down on drug trafficking, but when it comes to trafficking guns, uh, there's a often deafening silence on, on the other side of the aisle. Can you talk about why this aspect of TCO activity is so important and something that we need to address? 
Uh, just as you, you mentioned in your um, opening testimony, you know, there, there is the illegal export of nearly 600,000 weapons going into to Mexico. That's not insignificant. In, in many ways, it could be perceived as fueling this insurgency that's happening in Mexico that's taken so many civilians' lives in Mexico that Ms. Maldonado mentioned, and also the lives of Americans when the drugs come back into the United States. So in, in this case, we have to improve our, our border security um, going outbound um, as just one example. Um, and using technology, AI technology, uh, especially could be one way to get at this challenge. All right, my time has expired. Thank you all.